light within my heart, light within my thoughts, light within my words. May one and all and everything, blessed and loved ever be. Welcome. I am Sister Who. Today I just wanted to offer a few thoughts and reflections on the perhaps perennial question of does the ends justify the means? And what a very complex question this is. Uh, the, the first criteria, I guess, to, to bear in mind is that that decision never occurs without a context. That question never occurs without a context. It's when you say, does the ends justify the means? There is always a uh, cultural, economic, political, um, environmental context around it. And the only way you can answer the question, in addition to having, in addition to recognizing the context and recognizing the decision, the only way to answer the question is to also have a whole set of values about what is important. Does the ends justify the means? It depends upon how you, how much you value the means and how much you value the ends. If you value, well, negatively, I suppose, the, one of the problems in, uh, facing uh, a large part of the world at the present time is people who have placed profit or uh, financial gain as most important, that that is at the top of all their values, that there, to them there is nothing more valuable than making profit or uh, gaining financial resources. Um, and because that is most important, they will sacrifice literally anything uh, toward that end. And they would be the ones to answer, yes, the ends justifies the means. As long as we make a profit, it doesn't matter what we do to get there. The, the means uh, are irrelevant. What's important uh, is the outcome, is the profit, the, the end result. The for, for myself, perhaps, obviously, I wouldn't be able to answer that question that way because for me, my values focus upon relationships and people and spirituality and values that cannot be measured by money. You know, how do you put a price tag on love? How do you put a price tag on honesty or truth, uh, on integrity, um, on fairness, on peace? How do you put a price tag on peace? And yet these are the things that provide a quality, a high quality life experience. If you have a life experience that doesn't include love, that doesn't include peace, that doesn't include personal fulfillment, being able to be part of something, being able to have a sense of family, uh, those are all things that diminish that quality of life, that restrict it. And if those things aren't present, it becomes difficult to say that the, the ends, meaning the, uh, the sum total of what the life was or is, you know, because every, every human life is finite. It has a beginning and it has an end. And at the end of your life, you don't get to take anything with you beyond your memories and your love. Uh, you don't all the money stays here, so it's not really your money, it's not my money, it's the world's money, and the world will keep it. What you are, are left with in the end is what you've experienced and what you've learned during the amount of time you were here. So the only value money really has is the amount of good you can do with it while it's entrusted to your care. If you spend money on yourself and uh, and it goes no further, as soon as you're gone, the money is redistributed, uh, the resources, the possessions, whatever you built or accumulated is, is reallocated, and there may be a whole lot of people who waste no time in forgetting that you're ever here at all. Um, if, on the other hand, you invest yourselves in nurturing others, in loving people, in serving your community in whatever ways you can, with whatever your unique abilities and contributions are, then there is the possibility of creating something that has the possibility to outli of outliving you. Uh, for artists especially, there is 
um, perhaps this generalized aspiration of creating uh, a painting or a musical work or a sculpture or uh, a literary work or something that uh, will be still cherished long after the artist is gone from this earth. That, you know, in the same way that people continue to uh, visit and view Michelangelo's David, um, the Venus de Milo, um, the innumerable artworks in the Louvre in uh, Paris, um, going to hear the music of Mozart and Beethoven and Bach still being played, it's as if their work has outlived them by far. Uh, coming back to this basic philosophical question, does the ends justify the means? Does the fact that Vincent van Gogh's paintings now sell for many, many, many thousands of dollars justify the amount of suffering and poverty he endured throughout his lifetime while he was creating those paintings? Uh, or is there some sense in which it really wouldn't have hurt anything for someone to be there to provide a minimum of uh, basic security for him, a foundation that says you will not be homeless, uh, you will not go hungry, you, uh, you, we will see to it that you have at least adequate food, clothing, and shelter. Um, some people have argued that if artists are provided with all their basic needs, they won't have the motivation to reach deep into the struggles of human experience for the inspiration for their works. There are a great many works that were specifically inspired by the difficulties in the struggle and the pain that humanity has endured, either uh, specifically in, in particular individual persons or in general. There are, uh, when I went to uh, the Washington DC to the area called the Mall and got to see the Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, Memorial, um, it's, it's a quite extensive series of reliefs and sculptures and uh, I found it quite fascinating. But the interesting thing about it is that it, it didn't make any attempt to whitewash all the difficulties that President Roosevelt um, essentially led the American people through. It was rather uh, preserving for the sake of posterity, pr preserving so that future generations could see uh, this time of incredible struggle uh, in American history simply to survive, simply to have food, clothing, and shelter, and to remember that these things are never to be taken for granted, and that there was a time where we had to work together to survive at all. And so much of what Roosevelt did had to do with people working together. And you know, in, in a similar sort of way, when, when we say, does the ends justify the means? Does the creation of a prosperous nation justify all the suffering and struggle that went on to get to that point? It depends on how you look at it. Um, the, other, the other question that enters into that, though, is whether there were alternative ways by which the same ends could have been reached. Um, things that, for whatever reason, we didn't think of it at the time. Uh, I mean, a, a comedic corollary to that was the old black and white movie of the comedians Laurel and Hardy trying to move a piano. Uh, presumably, they were trying to deliver a piano to a particular address, and they got to the address, and it was a house up on a hill with all these stairs between the street level and where the house was. And so they started moving the piano all the way up the stairs and encountered so many different problems going up those stairs. And they'd get so far and the piano would roll back down to the street again and then they have to carry it back up again. They finally got to the top and discovered that there was a road to the house on the other side of the hill. Um, in true Laurel and Hardy fashion, of course, they said, well, we should have brought it up by the road, so they did. They carried it all the way back down the stairs again and drove around to the driveway instead of realizing they were already there in the first place. Uh, does the ends justify the means? It's not a, a black and white clear question. It's, it's always a subjective sort of yes it does or no it doesn't and there's no reason that everybody will agree on what the answer is, whether in fact the ends justify the means or not. The 
peculiar thing in, in that particular movie since I, I mentioned it was that in the end I'm not sure how playable the piano was by the time they got to the end of the movie anyway uh, you know and, and ideally the ends would the the conclusion that would supposedly justify the journey is people uh, standing and sitting around the piano singing together and, and having joyful times of, of family or community um, that somehow you know this to have something that those individuals value to be able to say yes the struggle was worth it and I don't regret all the effort it took to get to this point uh, for myself having been sister who for over 21 years at this point um, to be in this present situation of creating the show for you and for people to look at for many years to come uh, was it worth it um, I, I don't know that there's any way I can answer that. The best answer would be to meet the people who have been uh, positively affected by the things I've shared within the show. But the, the curious thing, I guess, about this, and then perhaps why it remains a perennial question, uh, an eternal question, does the ends justify the means, is that as our experience accumulates and we get more experiences and more experiences, some may move in one direction, some may move in another. That we may get to a point where we feel like everything has been a failure and regret, uh, you know, and say, in this case, no, the ends does not justify the means. Um, that I put all this effort into it, but I didn't get out of it uh, what I expected or what I wanted to get. Um, at other times, um, perhaps like the movie Mr. Holland's Opus, the the means to get to the point in time of his retirement in a basically stable situation you know not not lucrative but basically stable he was uh, retiring early from teaching when what he really wanted to be was a musician and a, uh, a, a musical composer all those years but he was being a music teacher and he really wasn't even paying attention to his own life, that he was investing his life in others and they were benefiting from it, but they never came back and told him until the very end when he's retiring and suddenly there's this whole room full of people and the governor of the state, being a former student of his, shows up and says, you know, if you think you're a failure, you're wrong because there's not a life in this room you haven't touched. Um, we are the the notes of your symphony, the notes of your opus. Uh, we are the music of your life. And so often we're involved in the present moment of our lives and we have no idea who's listening to the music that we're creating. When we ask, does the ends justify the means? Uh, we need to be careful that the reason we're asking that is not because we want to employ a means that are questionable. Um, that we want an excuse to do something that really shouldn't be done. On the other hand, you know, when we get to that end and, um, you know, what was the conclusion uh, and the beautiful music that comes out of that to say, yes, I can accept that it was worth it. Um, I find the end sufficiently valuable um, that I don't care what came before anymore. Uh, in a similar sort of way, though, there have often been jokes made about uh, people in business or, um, or performance uh, professions that resorted to ethically questionable means to make their advancements. Uh, you know, who bribed the boss? Who uh, engaged in sexual improprieties with the boss in order to get a favor from the boss or a promotion or something? And I have to wonder if someone uh, became wildly successful after that, if they would still say, and of course it'd be different for every person, if they would still say that the success they accomplished was really worth the personal sacrifice and the personal cost that they paid. Um, or if, I mean, to me, there's certain things that if, if the end result is accomplished in the worst possible way, 
I would have a very difficult time saying it was worth it. Um, I think I would be more inclined, myself at least, to say that if that's what it costs, it's not worth having. You know, and, and there are various movies and literary works that have explored that as well. That if um, if you have to sacrifice the one you love for the career you uh, seek, would you do it? Um, in uh, you know, an easy example, I suppose, is The Christmas Carol, uh, where Ebenezer Scrooge and the young woman named Belle, whom uh, to whom he was engaged for a time, and how in the end he became a very wealthy man, but he was completely alone. Did the ends justify the means? Well, the day before Christmas he probably would have said yes. The day after Christmas I'm not so sure he would have said yes. Uh, I'm not so sure he would have said the day after Christmas, after he had been reawakened to the truth of his own life, that sacrificing his one genuine chance at love uh, was worth all the money and, and all the things that he accumulated because of making that sacrifice. Or if given a chance to do it over again, he would have chosen a much more modest outcome so that he could have included love within his life. But these are not just isolated literary possibilities and movies and books and so forth. These are the things that happen within our lives each and every day. Uh, Often we don't recognize them for what they are at the time they're happening. You know, when we plan uh, an event at a, a social club or a church or at school or wherever, whatever association someone may have, who are we leaving out and why? And, and if it is to reach a certain end, does what we accomplish in the end really justify the fact that we excluded them? and that they are not there because we uh, we didn't want them there or we considered them a liability. Uh, very, uh, without dealing with a specific example, it's hard to say exactly, but, and of course every situation is different. But the point in, in even asking the question, does the end justify the means, is to encourage more awareness of what is going on in our lives after all. And to be conscious when we're paying a cost for a particular outcome, what is the cost we're paying? And what is the outcome we expect to get? And if we don't get that outcome, then we're a double loser because we haven't got what we want, we've lost the goal, and we've also lost the means because we chose to do something that we wouldn't have chosen to do otherwise. Um, there's a sense in which, you know, negatively, perhaps cynically, some people's lives could be viewed as a succession of failures, of making poor choices. And yet still somehow, out of love, we need to give everyone the chance to do the right thing. We need to allow the possibility of healing also. Uh, there have been so many times, though, where people have sacrificed, uh, have chosen a means that is undesirable for a goal that is desirable, and then they don't get the goal, uh, either because someone else got there before them or something else didn't work out, uh, a return or an investment they anticipated would be great didn't turn out that way. There's a whole lot of different reasons. There's a, some people I've met respond to that by becoming cynical about the future and living only for the present. Um, some people uh, whom I've met, uh, conversely, will put all the stock in the future and neglect the present moment. You know, the future being the ends, the present being the means, it, it's a myriad of choices to make. But the, the important thing, I guess, to me is to look for a holistic integration, to see that there is beauty within the present, and there is beauty within the future, and there is risk within both of them as well. And one should weigh one's choices carefully. But 
I recall seeing a bumper sticker recently that said love is never wrong. And in that case, it was referring to uh, same-sex possibilities of same-sex marriage. That if love is genuinely love, it doesn't matter what gender the two people involved, it doesn't matter what race the two people are. Uh, I mean, there was a time when interracial marriages were illegal, and and people who were involved in interracial marriages were told to be ashamed of of what they had done, and all they've really done is chosen to give love a chance. Chosen to give love a chance. The, in the moment, in the future, in the present, the dynamic of love to me seems to be the one thing that somehow, in spite of all the negativity that happens and all the tragic events that happen, uh, the dynamic of love is the one thing that keeps humanity going and that keeps the universe held together somehow and that gives us a new day to look forward to. Uh, that essentially makes the sun come up the next day in, in an emotional sort of sense. You know, that, that allows us to see yet another chance for things to go magically, marvelously, beautifully right. In spite of how many times things have gone wrong, to allow that because of love, because of hope, because of a certain kind of faith, we can believe in the possibility at least that things could go right. Does the ends justify the means? I suppose I, a follow-up question I would be inclined to ask rather than answer the question too quickly is simply, does it have to? Uh, do either the ends or the means need to be justified? Or are both of them sufficiently in line with wisdom and love that whether we get the best possible outcome or the worst possible outcome, we have nothing to regret. To find the means that has some hope of a positive outcome, but in any case is a means that we, do, we don't mind paying, uh, work we don't mind doing, um, a strategy that is ethically sound, uh, that doesn't involve lying or cheating or creating our success at someone else's expense. Uh, I've been saying for quite a number of years that American prosperity cannot continue to be based upon third world poverty. And, you know, because we're moving into an age of global community in which no one is going to be willing to be the third world country anymore. Everybody wants to be a first world country, but we haven't come up with, in spite of all the universities and colleges that we have all across this country, around the world even, we haven't come up with a system by which every nation in the world can be a first, na a first world country, uh, you know, where there can be an egalitarian sort of exchange and nobody is required to live in poverty for the sake of somebody else's wealth. It's inevitable as that global community continues to form, that people from those impoverished countries will come to the so-called first world countries, will get college educations, will develop, you know, whatever uh, abilities they can, and of course will feel something for the people whom they left behind, and may start channeling money there to bring those people up to a uh, higher quality of living. Sounds wonderful, except that of course it's upsetting the whole balance if we maintain an economic and political system that requires hierarchies uh, and different uh, economic levels, that requires economic stratification, you know, that there's strata, like layers of rock in the earth. And if all of humanity is rising to the same level, we've got to create a new system that allows all of humanity to be on the same level and that allows for, for fair and equitable and, and loving and wise relationships on that level. You know, maybe we all need to get to a point of recognizing that buying a more expensive car than you need is not something for which you're to be commended. It's, it's cause for shame that you have selfishly used resources that could have benefited your entire community. 
you know, in, in a tribal society, in, in my perhaps idealized understanding of it, resources were shared. And for someone to hoard a resource while other people in the tribe suffered or even starved to death would be positively disgraceful. It needs to be every bit as disgraceful now. Does ignoring millions of people in poverty, is that tolerable if what those people contributed and gave even their own lives toward technological development. Uh, you know, if we're able to create this utopia run by technology and so forth, does it excuse the millions in, upon millions of people who have died in that effort? The people will be left behind because they don't have the, uh, the financial resources to attend our personal growth workshops and our spirituality conferences and people who don't have the financial resources for whatever education they'd like to pursue. You know, perhaps people who have had it so drilled into their head that all these things are beyond their reach that they're not even hoping or dreaming of, of such beauty anymore. If that's the case, then the first task in making the ends justify the means, or the means justify the ends, that in both cases, no matter how we look at this uh, dynamic, it begins with living like we genuinely believe that everyone matters, every single person. What part of all don't you understand? A person is a person is a person is a person. And every person matters. 